Hi everyone, Tony Tonkin here. It's been a while since I've been able to record a video and to have a conversation with you about things in relation to the child protection system. So here we are for a discussion, really, around what's happening within child protection here in uh, South Australia and I guess the wider impact that some of this will have for most of you living in other states and overseas. One of the most important things at the moment is that the Child Protection Department here in South Australia are changing the way they work. Hopefully, I don't hold out all that much hope. In fact, now that I think about it, probably very not very much at all. However, what we need to be mindful of is the fact that they're changing their chief executive and that within a couple of weeks they'll be appointing somebody else, that there have been a report uh, on, into the child protection system, which I'll talk about in just a moment, and there is um, there's been some movements, I guess, in terms of what that looks like in terms of an inquiry that uh, the department plans to have. A, like we need another inquiry to tell us what's wrong with the child protection system. I'm sure each of you know that's watching this that's encountered the child protection system that you understand what the issues are. So I'm going to bring up a few items just to talk about news items, just to talk about all of that, and then I'm going to bring up a story in relation to a child that was returned to an autistic father and severely abused as a result of that decision by the Department of Child Protection. So I'm going to start with the Chief Executive, and I've talked about this before, and that is that uh, we've had here in South Australia a woman by the name of Cathy Taylor who has been in this position for six years and she's failed every one of us miserably. Those of us who want to see changes in the child protection system didn't see any. Children that should have been removed from families weren't. Children who were removed and shouldn't have been were removed. There has been no change. The child protection workers remain the same. We've got more of them. They appear to me to be younger, less experienced social workers than what we've had in the past. And the system, as a result, seems to be deteriorating. Now, I'm not going to make an assumption that all social workers who are young are terrible social workers. That's just not true. I have met some who have been outstanding. But on the whole, there are, we are inundated with a group of social workers who are inexperienced, who don't understand often how to work with people that believe, for whatever reason, that they are in total control, that they're omniscient, that they know all that there is to know, and that uh, perhaps parents don't know all that much at all, and particularly labelling and seeing parents, all parents, as bad parents, and this notion that the department and the government is far better at looking after kids than what uh, the parents are. And we know for a fact that that's just not true, that there are many cases, and I'm about to cite one, where the department makes terrible decisions, and have children uh, removed uh, unnecessarily or have them removed and, re and placed with somebody who continues to harm them. So we need to be asking ourselves, how are the assessments made? What are parents, what are the, what are the department, what is the department doing that in fact creates a situation whereby incorrect decisions are made, whichever look, whichever way you look at that, that there are often decisions made that are damaging kids either way. Well, one of the reasons is, I believe, that they do not have a standard in which they can work in terms of assessing people, and they do not, and they refuse to have conversations with parents whereby they can better understand where the parents are coming from, they can work appropriately with parents to ensure where possible children are returned, and particularly where possible, they should be able to work with parents to determine whether or not they can have the kids return to them or not. So there needs to be decisions made whereby the department is able to be relatively certain that a parent whose behaviour has been rather horrific uh, is not likely to have care for those children ever again. Now, I know that it's a complicated issue, that there are many nuances and there are many ways of looking at this problem. But we're pretty tired, I think, of seeing the same issues regurgitated over and over again. From the removal of children and placed with people where they shouldn't be placed, and the removal of children by the department and having those children be abused or even worse, die while in their care, 
and to have children removed and abused by members of the government themselves. So what are we going to do about all of this? Well, they've set up an inquiry. What more could one want? The inquiry is designed to be able to get a group of experts together who can talk about what needs to be done. Now, there have been many people who have um, uh, discussed this in the past, me including, on many of the videos that we've published here on the Child Protection Party YouTube channel and on Facebook. But very rarely, if ever, do we get anybody from the department contacting us and asking us because of our experience working with families uh, and hearing what families have to say and their children, what is it that we think needs to change? Now, I'm not suggesting that academics don't know or understand this. I'm sure that they do. What we fail to have is a will of the department in order to make the changes that are absolutely necessary. And the question we really need to be asking is even if we know what the problem is, and often the problem is social work practice, even if we know that is the problem, why is it so difficult to rectify it? Why is it that so many decisions, poor decisions are made that impact children and their families and nothing is ever done about it? I can just highlight one of those. And I was talking to a client earlier today who was informed that even though his case is going to reunification, it looks like they're going to reunify uh, the children with the mother, dubious decision at best, but nevertheless, that's what they're planning to do. And his access has been decreased from fortnightly to once a month. Now, I don't know how anyone could possibly ever, because he's not a violent man, he's got a good relationship with these two young children. I can't understand why they think that that is in the best interest of the children, because it isn't. I had another case today, which is worth noting as well, whereby a woman I've been working with for quite some time has had to battle with the family court whereby a child has been removed from her initially and then was delivered to the father of this child, a, a person whom this child didn't know incidentally and the father had never had any contact with the child or had very little contact over six years, and then is returned to the father and the department says, well, if you're going to fight this out, you have to fight it out within the family court and we'll provide a report to the family court, which is what they do. Now... She found out today that this child has been returned to the department because the father could no longer do or manage the six-year-old's behaviour. The child was returned a month ago and she only found out today that the child was back in the department's care. She wasn't offered access. She hasn't seen this child for 12 months because they've been fighting out within the, in the family court what should be done. And at, the, at that point, the father had 100% care. Now he is handing the kid back because he can't deal with the behaviour. The mother hasn't seen the child for over 12 months and it has cost her over $16,000 to fight this matter in the family court. And the department, I believe, should be responsible for the decisions that they've made about placing this child with a father who is clearly inappropriate and incapable of looking after this kid she should charge the department for the cost it took to take the matter to the family court. A person with very little resources at her disposal and really could not afford the $16,000 that it cost her to this point. Another case where the decision of the department has failed. I'm still, I feel rather angry, in fact, that they haven't, they didn't, they failed to notify the mother that the child was back in the department's care and reinstate access. In the interim, this woman has had another child. The department's okay with all of that. Um, and uh, that particular situation in terms of that child and a new partner and everything is going along beautifully. The child would not be at harm at all or not at risk within this, this new family of hers. But the department in their stupidity and ignorance, 
have chosen to exclude her from the decisions that relate directly to her child, a matter which they had dismissed because they put it before or told the, uh, the father to go to the family court and they would dispense with the case. They're back with it now. They have to start to deal with it. But they need to get their act together because it's decisions like this that make us think that they are incompetent, that they don't have the expertise, they don't have the knowledge or understandings or even the ethical principles to contact the mother and let her know what is happening for her son. It's like the father who, can't, who will get to see his two kids once a month. How is that of any benefit? It's like parents who, get to, who don't know or are, are not informed about medical issues that sit with their kids. It's the dismissal, the total dismissal. So if the government wants to deal with this issue, it is about confronting the notion that they want to eradicate the parent from the child's life as best as they can because they're under the false belief that they are the better parent. And there are many examples where that just simply is not the case. So um, just want to highlight just some of these, uh, these articles that uh, I had brought up. So this is a while ago we had uh, the issue that uh, Taylor was leaving. Uh, she was on $383,000 a year, did bugger all during that time, uh, a waste of taxpayers' money, nothing ever really happened. Um, but in the report that's come out since, uh, in the Hyde report in particular, um, there are a few recommendations that are worth noting. Uh, launching a new t task force on child neglect. Now, I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, absolute bloody waste of time and money and resources, but that's what they're going to do, to ensure the child protection workers understand the risk of harm through neglect and squalor. Now, the reason why this particular issue has come about is because, um, if I can just find it, um, it was because of a case which happened quite recently uh, where the, the, th the three, three children that had passed away last year, um, their parents, uh, the, the three of their parents have been charged with criminal neglect. So what the department and what the police and the government have chosen to do, and all parents be wary. Now, I'm, I, don't, I know that most parents would not fall into this criminal neglect area, but it is worth noting that if the department knocks on your door and they view that your children are either living in squalor, which they should not be living in, or that they're unkept in any way, or neglected, according to the department, there is now a good chance that you will be charged with criminal neglect. Now, in, over the, ever since I've been doing this work, um, that it's, it's been unlikely that parents, uh, unless it was extreme circumstances, will be charged with uh, criminal neglect. But... We are now looking at a totally different situation where the government, because of the children that have died, believe that they need to take responsibility for this so they're going to make it tougher. So I don't think that parents necessarily will be, um, I suppose, wondering about whether they're going to be charged with this. Um, but I'm just putting out a warning generally. Be careful because at the end of the day, uh, the department will come after you and if they can see any neglectful behaviour, they may choose to charge you for that. They haven't in the past, but I think that bar's been shifted somewhat and they may do that in the future. Um, so what they've done is they've decided that they're going to hold this expert group. Now, we don't know actually who's on this expert group, but I can guarantee you that nothing will change. doesn't matter how much knowledge you've got because the reason, the reason why nothing will change is because the, um, the real issue is about practice, 
about the way we view parents. It's about burying our prejudices and our, our judgments on people. And when we can do that, fine. Things are likely to change. But the reality is the people within the department will not do that. Uh, they haven't got enough insight, enough self-reflection to realise the way that they're behaving. And so it's unlikely that those particular behaviours will change. Uh, child's death and neglect will be the top priority of a new 15-member expert. So this has come out of the Hyde report, as I just mentioned. Uh, they'll be charged with advising Child Protection Minister on how to fix the system. Uh, now, I don't know what magic solution they have, but clearly they think that there must be one. It's a, it's a cultural issue primarily and as a practice issue. I doubt whether they'll ever address those two issues. Uh, the announcement came on the day police arrested three people in connection, this was I was talking about earlier, um, the Nowland, the Wanganeen and Wilmot cases. Um, she did not comment on the arrest of these children, fair enough. She's expected to meet uh, four to six times a year. This is this committee. So they're not going to meet um, and do another inquiry, I guess. They're just going to meet as experts and uh, they're going to direct Hildyard as to what changes she needs to make. Um, so they're not. So the interesting thing about this is not immediate. They're not saying right now we need to make these changes. It's going to sort of drip feed these these changes to the minister, and the minister will look at them. Then she'll take them to whoever is the chief executive, and the chief executive will look at them, and she'll consult some of her senior staff, and then they'll all sit back and they say, "Well, this is too freaking hard. We don't know how to do it, or we just haven't got the courage or the guts to be able to do it." Or there'll be so much pushback from the other public servants, those that have been there for a while, will push back against any change. You know, let's let's consider for a moment. Let's consider for a moment just getting rid of all the deadwood, those people that just do not function appropriately, that have been there either a long time, do not accept change, as shitty social workers, don't know how they should be doing their job, never have done it properly. Those people that bully, harass, and so on, other. Um, the clients, parents and children, get rid of them to start with. How about that? How about we just clean out that system and have remaining those people that actually know how to do the job? But before you do all of that, you have to know what the job requires to start with. And my guess is there are too few people in the department who understand that enough to be able to bring about the change that is required. Um, so, this I want to go. So, Hyde find, findings include that the government should establish a task force on child neglect. Asked about this on Wednesday, Mr. Hyde conceded no task had yet been uh, task force had been yet created, but stressed the neglect would be a key focus of a new expert group. So, clearly, it's not focusing just on neglect but that's clearly one of the issues which they plan to confront. There's definitely going to focus on neglect as a priority. Also, we do need to look at exactly how we examine really quickly, oh, thank God for that, uh, the circumstances around child deaths and serious matters that come up and to look at what the review model is, is so that it is really strong. We really want them to get into that work as well. Right, so they want to work out um, how they make decisions, I guess, uh, around serious circumstances, children's deaths, and that's pretty serious, um, and I guess neglect issues as well. So how do they make decisions about that? And the other thing too, of course, is what do they put in place once they've made those decisions? Um, it's one thing, you know, like the percentage of parents who are neglectful to the point whereby it severely and strictly damages kids and puts them at risk of death. Um, the number of parents that actually do that would be relatively small when one looks at the total number of kids that are removed. And the thing that we need to be mindful of is that the total number of children that are removed increases um, exponentially each, each year. So, um, you know, it's around 7% or was a year or so ago. It increases and it gets more and more. And so... Eventually, we're going to wonder, you know, what kids are with their parents because the department just removes people because they're the better parents. So, um, so what, what actually is going to change? Well, we don't know, but we're going to keep you informed as to what these changes are. And if you see any that you think are significant, let us know. 
You know, one of the things I've often said is that, uh, and I had I was work, working with a client today who was telling me that uh, there, was a, there was a worker she was working with before who was fine, who was fabulous. She absolutely hates the current worker because she feels put down, whatever. Parents know what is good, what works for them, what they feel comfortable with, even though the department's got their children. They know how people are and how they should be treated. And I think, you know, the, this, this inquiry, this, these expert panels, if they want to find out what the system needs and how it needs to change, then they need to have conversations with some of these parents and these kids, you know. Um, but I guess they won't. So the final issue that I want to talk about, um, if I can find it, this is the one, and this is, this is a sad story that I started to talk about earlier in this, in this broadcast, and that is that um, a father pleads guilty to abhorrent abuse of his daughter, uh, who was placed in his care by child protection. Uh, child protection removed a toddler from her unstable mother and placed her with her father, who subjected the girl to some of the most abhorrent abuse seen by the courts. A young child was removed from the age of her unstable mother and placed with her autistic father, who abused three-year-old for more than a year, filming and disseminating his abhorrent acts online. So how can we possibly ever see or take the department seriously when they will return a child to a father who clearly had some issues to start with. Now, I've known many, many, and I'm talking hundreds of families, where the, the parent clearly was not as bad as this parent was. Right? Might have had some mental health issues, maybe leaving a DV relationship, and probably some drug use. I get all of that, but had overcome it. A lot of parents do. They work really hard to do that, and they need to be celebrated for doing that. And they don't have the department return their children to them. But in this case, they returned the child to a father who clearly had some issues. And as a result of that, this man was a pedophile and he abused this child. And those images of this kid are on the internet now forever. So what sort of decision process went into? Who's responsible for this? Who's going to say, I made a lousy decision? These are the, this is the logic and the reason why I made this decision in the first place. It was flawed. What is it that I can learn from making these sorts of decisions? Right? Because what happens is the department starts to think, well, maybe we should take all kids away. Just look after them ourselves. Spend one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars per child. Let's just spend that money on them. Let's not do some work to help the parents to become better parents. Let's just take them. Because eventually, that's where we're going to go. It's kind of where we are right now, and we need to think about what is it that we can do to change that, to make those decisions better, more appropriate for kids, so they don't get returned to people that will harm them or don't stay within the department. Um, District Court Judge uh, Anthony Allen, a former veteran prosecutor in defence before being appointed to the bench, said the offending was among the most serious he had seen. He described the decision by the Department of Child Protection to place the child with her father as an opportunity lost with catastrophic consequences. Let's, let's part of this inquiry that they're going to have. Let, let them punish people. Like, who made this decision should be punished. Maybe they should be charged with criminal neglect. Why don't we do that? Maybe they'd start to think differently about their roles if they knew they were criminally responsible for placing children with places whereby they're going to be harmed. He described the decision of the Department of Child Protection to child with an opportunity. The, the Southern Suburbs man who cannot be named... He has since pleaded guilty to maintaining an unlawful relationship with the child as well as multiple counts of producing, disseminating and possessing child 
uh, exploitation material. Prosecutor told the court the man had bragged to people in online chat groups about the abuse he was perpetrating against his daughter. It was aged three years and four months when all of this happened. So there is so much that we need to talk about that none of this stuff seems to have ever really gone away. So what I'd like you to do is, if you've got time, can you contact us at admin at childprotection.party, uh, have a conversation with Avery about your issue. He'll direct you to somebody who can help you to deal with that as best as we can. I'm doing less and less of that work now. Um, but uh, also ring the bell, let us know, uh, and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube. But what we do want you to do is to get involved. Get involved with the Child Protection Party. Um, contact us about what's ever happening to you. Um, we, we need some, some people who are prepared to stand up for kids. If you're one of those people, contact Avery at admin at childprotection.party and let him know because he'd love to have you on board. He'd love to have you become a part of this movement which is about making sure that the lives of children are improved. Thanks, everybody, for being with me. Take care, look after yourselves and, more importantly, be safe. Mm -hmm.